What would be the ideal gadgets and vehicle weapons for Battlefield 6? That's a question I've been asking myself a lot lately. In this video, I want to consider some of the gadgets and weapons we may see make a return in the upcoming Battlefield later this year. So I'm going to start off here with some of my absolute favourite weapons that I would love to see make a return, and then follow up with some that I would honestly prefer to be forgotten. Since Battlefield 6 is widely rumoured to be a return to the modern theatre of war, it's not a bad idea to look at Battlefield 4 for inspiration here. So Battlefield 4 really built upon what Battlefield 3 brought to the table and expanded vehicle loadouts and gadgets quite a bit. As an example, in Battlefield 3, the only launchers you had were the RPG for the Russians, the Smaw for the Americans, the Stinger and Igler, and then the Javelin, which is fairly situational. In Battlefield 4, they added the MBT Law, which is the noob friendliest of the launchers. It basically auto locks your target and does a top down attack, but at reduced damage. And then on the other end of the spectrum, they added the wire guided. SRAW launcher, which acts as an infantry portable wire guided tow launcher, which you know takes a lot of skill to use, but if you can connect with an attack heli or a jet, it's a one shot kill, so it can also be very rewarding. So, in my mind, the more skill based weapons in Battlefield are the ones that really provide some of those real Battlefield moments. The tow missile is a great example, it's been around since Battlefield 2, and it should definitely be in Battlefield 6. For those who don't know, this thing follows your crosshair wherever you aim, so you have to constantly keep track of both your target, but also where your missile is and effectively thread the needle. And if you can manage to do that, it will one-shot most air vehicles. Now I'm not particularly skilled with tow missiles, but the further away, and of course the smaller the target is, as I'm sure you can guess, the harder it becomes. So this weapon really makes for some fantastic plays. Another one of those weapons for me is the TV missile. Please, DICE, bring back the TV. With this one, you actually become the missile, and I mean, come on, it's just cool, man. Who doesn't love remote controlling a missile and having it connect with your target up close and personal? This one has also been part of the Attack Heli's arsenal since Battlefield 2, and it's just an absolute classic. We've all seen some insane TV missiles where people bob and weave between obstacles before finally colliding with their target and getting that kill, and you know, it really just makes for some great gaming moments. Maybe fix the weird bug where it blows up your attack helicopter from time to time, or clips through the entire map, but yeah, I would love to see the TV missile return. Next up we have the JDAM bomb. Now it doesn't necessarily have to be called the JDAM bomb, it's basically just a dumb fire bomb in Battlefield, and it pretty much does what it says on the tin. You drop it from your attack jet, and if it hits its target, it does a bunch of damage. So maybe not quite as fancy as the tow missile or the TV, but the long time to target coupled with the high damage and again, the fact that it can one shot most air vehicles really makes the JDAM one of those skill weapons. Believe me, if you JDAM a helicopter or even better, an enemy jet in midair, it's just one of those moments you'll always remember. Okay, moving on, we have the humble RPG and the small. As long as it's a straight shot, unguided missile or projectile, I think it will always have a place in Battlefield. It's always nice to land those RPGs and s'mores on moving targets, generally anything with a travel time where you have to predict the movement of your enemy is going to be a fairly skillful weapon. I would also mention that the, the SRAW or the SRAW was, in my opinion, a great inclusion in Battlefield 4 for the same reasons as the tow missile, so hopefully we see that one return for the engineer class as well. Alright, moving on, let's talk about some of the worst gadgets and weapons that either need to be reworked or simply removed altogether. Do bear in mind of course, this is only my opinion. First up, active radar and passive radar missiles. Oh boy, where do I start with these? So in this footage here, I'm using active radar missiles. For those who don't know, active radar missiles don't need to be locked on like heat seekers. You simply fire them in the general direction of an aircraft, and they will automatically lock on once close enough and cause a mobility hit, doing damage, and basically giving the aircraft a very small window of time 
to use countermeasures to combat the missile, and also a very small chance of escaping unscathed. For the record, I don't really mind lock-on systems per se, like heat seekers and stingers. Not everybody can be a tow missile hero, and you know, some people prefer to use a lock-on system that's more reliable to take down enemy vehicles, and I think that's fine. But in this case, it needs to be considerably less effective than the more skillful weapons. The less skill a weapon requires, the less effective it should be, or at least I think so. With active radar missiles, that simply isn't the case. They're extremely easy to use, and extremely effective. As you can see here in the footage, all I'm really doing is firing a single missile to catch each pilot off guard and get that mobility hit, and then my cannons, or any other vehicles around for that matter, will just finish the job. And if they use their ECM at just the right time to evade my first missile, I still have another two missiles that I can fire. In fact, using this method, I was never really out of missiles completely, and I pretty much totally shut down the enemy air single-handedly. Passive radar missiles have a similar story, but only worse, really. With passives, you have to maintain your lock in order for them to hit, right? But you can lock onto a vehicle after they've been fired. So here, I'm using them in the stealth jet, all you do is dumb fire them off into the distance and then lock onto your target and the missiles will then like reroute themselves towards your target and explode and if executed correctly the target will get a warning of about half a second with which to react and use countermeasures. And in some situations with a high ping or a low tick rate server, whether you hit ECM or not they're still going to hit you. In fact the window you have to react is so small that a lot of the time, as a pilot, you won't hear any lock-on sound whatsoever. You just hear the noise of two missiles hitting you. Passives are very broken in every sense of the word. Given the fact that the whole lock-on gameplay in Battlefield is built up around the pilot hearing those lock-on warnings and having a chance to react, you know, introducing a weapon that completely circumvents that gameplay loop is really just beyond me. I do appreciate DICE's effort to expand the vehicle weapon loadouts beyond what we had in Battlefield 3 and create some new interesting toys, but if these missiles are going to be in the next game, they really need some big changes. Okay, moving on, we have the guided shell with the PLD or the SOFLAM. So this is another lock-on weapon for the tank this time though. Now normally by itself, the guided shell is nothing special. You have to lock on and hold the lock, it pretty much aims for you, but you still need line of sight to the tank, and it hits for similar damage to, say, an AP shell. However, if you have another player laser designating a target either from the gunner position or as a recon player, this thing does 45 damage per shot to enemy armor, and it one-shots helis. It's fire and forget, so you don't have to hold the lock, and you don't even need line of sight because the shell just flies up in the air and does a top-down attack on its target. So in my eyes, tank-on-tank -tank battles are all about pillaring and height advantage and things like that. The guided shell pretty much does away with all of that because you can hit targets behind cover, you can hit them for more damage than you would with your regular shells, and you can hit them from greater distances. It is true that you have to sacrifice your secondary weapon slot for this, and like I said, without a laser designator, it's not really worth it in my opinion, and for that reason, you'll find most tankers run with the heavy machine gun as their secondary. But if you have a dedicated player with you who's going to be dropping soflams or gunning for you, it's simply put too effective. So that's my list of what I think DICE at least should take as inspiration for vehicle weapons and gadgets for Battlefield 6. I'm almost certain we'll see at least some of these return, and I'm also sure we're going to get some new stuff that nobody has ever seen. In fact, at this point, DICE are probably way past the point where they would go adding new gadgets and weapons into the game and messing around with the balance, so I suppose you could argue that I just wasted my breath, really. But balance is, after all, an ever-changing issue, and Battlefield games rarely look the same on release as they do a few years down the line. Hopefully this time around, the balance is going to be solid. Let me know your thoughts down below guys, would you agree on my choices for vehicle weapons and gadgets, and if not, let me know why not. Also, 
What new weapons and vehicles would you like to see in the new game? And if not upon release, perhaps in DLC down the line? Put all of that down below. Thank you guys ever so much for watching. Hit that like button if you did enjoy. Subscribe for more Battlefield 6. And I'll see you next time. Cheers.